Oh, hi, finally, good. Hello. Hola. <laughs> He's misbehaving at the moment. Babaji, okay. <laughs> He's gorgeous. Bono, you're ages trying to get him on this chair. You see, it's just. <laughs> oh. Babaji, no, no. I spent ages. Okay. Come on, guys. This is supposed to be a serious thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's condition. I just sent. You okay? How you doing, Erica? Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Mal. Hi. And that is oh, yeah. Irma. Present, always supporting us. Hello, uh, supporting you. If my patients are angry at me, at least you guys are not. So. <laughs> so, I don't know. Papa, Nippy, Bono. Oh, wow, you are crazy. <laughs> Mauricio, I love it. What is he up to? Let's see. What is he? He looks like he's on some sort of bike. Yeah, he's in his hotel, probably just going for a little ride, checking out. <laughs> Camila, you're so you serious. Oh, no, I was just Erica, sorry. I was just Erica. contemplating. How yeah. are you? Camila, forgive I'm me. Yours. Oh, no problem. I'll see you tonight. I'll see, I'll see you tomorrow night, though. Yeah, when are you doing? When is your second? When is your second one? I think I'm going to do it on Saturday at lunchtime. Brilliant. Um, yeah, for sure. How did it go? Yeah, good. I'm glad it's over. It was good. <laughs> Technical. It was, was it great. It? it was great. It, not it was good. It was great. Oh, was thank you, Emma. Oh, you're so guys. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was, yeah, I'm, it was your, your lesson, your Zoom lesson was really helpful because I got a bit stuck with the technology, but uh, it was oh, really helpful. Yeah. Okay, that it helped. I love it. Yeah, Zoom you. lessons, Zoom cooking, Zoom webinar, Zoom life. Zoom life now, Zoom life, Zoom, Zoom, baby, Zoom, Zoom. All the way. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going oh, to hi. mute you all. Uh, we've just lost the co-star, he's gone again. How about up? <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute you all. Uh, we've, he's gone. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, it's a real pleasure having you. Um, I'm going to ask something of you because I know you've all had, um, well, from all over the world, you're probably um, uh, either starting the day or you're in the middle of the day or you're... Um, uh, your uh, uh, ending the day and uh, forgive me just getting used to the uh, zoom okay so what I want you to do is to really relax so however you're sitting I want you to take your shoes off take your glasses off and just relax and um, this is your time and I'm going to be storytelling so I just want you to relax and really use this as an opportunity to just really um, to really chill out so, um, Annette, uh, David, um, all of you who are just coming in now, just, I want you to relax. This is your time. So it's five o'clock in the UK um, and we have my co-star who's just sort of floating around at the moment, but just really relax because this is just going to be a story that I'm going to be telling you. Okay, to start. So the title is um, The Art of Being With Your Dog, The Journey of Mindfulness and to a Plant-Based Diet. Now, I'm going to give you a short uh, introduction to myself. Then I'm going to introduce Bono. Um, so he's going to tell you a story uh, about uh, him. And then I'm gonna talk, you, talk to you about my journey. And uh, then I'm going to do a mindfulness exercise. Uh, towards the end. So just really relax. And if you want to, you can close your eyes. It's like a podcast. I'm going to be talking to you. 
Um, so lovely, Christina's just joined. Christina, so I'm just telling everybody to just relax. Uh, this is uh, the next sort of 45, 50 minutes is just for you to listen to some stories and just relish this time and use it for yourself. So I'll begin. So I'm Ruby Sandu. I've been on this uh, marvelous revolving piece of rock we call planet Earth for half a century, yes. And as I get older, I seem to regress and become more um, childlike, not childish. So most of this uh, time on the planet was spent educating myself so I could be part of this extraordinary system. I trained as a lawyer in large city law firms. I earned a couple of postgraduate degrees. I taught law at university. I taught, uh, you know, still teach and train mediation and conflict resolution, something I'm also very passionate about at one of the leading schools in London. And I have extravagantly jetted around the world, uh, particularly mostly for work. And um, if I want to summarize this sort of part of my life, I'll call it blah, blah, blah. So that's the tip of the iceberg. That's what I do to fit into this system. But what most of us um, and what the sort of multi-billion dollar hypnotic uh, marketing uh, industry tells us is uh, success. But let me take you behind the curtain of my stage or below the tip of the iceberg to what you don't see. So below the tip of the iceberg is a duality and duality is something that just sort of oscillates, you know, it's not a schizophrenia, it's just something where you're not completely whole in something. And so it was a part of me that one part, like the blah, 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 had invested so much in terms of wanting to fit into the system and, um, you know, what was termed success. And then there was um, another part, uh, you know, and this was the part that I was really tantalized by, you know, the unreal and how exciting it was. And then there was the other side, it's the inner void. And I know all of you at some point in your life have touched upon it. And we will keep touching upon this, this sort of feeling of, is there something more? Um, and yeah, so this, this part of me um, was something that um, it, whenever I came upon it, I would immediately uh, consume, I would buy, I would travel, I would drink, I would do all those things that people do to just avoid that part of themselves. Um, and so I would go off and, um, you know, I'd go off on 24 hours solo retreats in the wilderness. I trained as a yoga teacher. I did intensive sadhanas. I did self-development courses, ashrams, intensive shamanic experiences. Um, and again, I'd like to summarize that as blah, 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 because these are all stories. So what is happening now, as I sort of turn half a century, is um, you, you come to this state, which is uh, childlike, as Buddha says, um, it's the childlike state, not the childish state. And I just want to, because I'd, I'd like to um, introduce a very important part of my life, which was the five years I spent, uh, my first five years in India. Um, and these were innocent years spent in, in India with my grandparents. I have memories. They're like sort of, you know, these, these black and white photographs that you have sort of lying around from previous generations. And in my memory, they're dusty and they're distorted. And for the first five years of my life, I was a real young Mowgli out of the Jungle Book. Um, I was wild, I was untamed, I was barefoot, I was, um, I, you know, I spent a lot of time shouting um, no or barking orders and, and giving advice to people who really didn't want it, you know, this little, um, you know, um, four or five kid. And um, uh, my grandparents, in their spiritual wisdom, because they were quite elderly, um, relished that and said don't touch this uh, young girl let her just be as free as she wants to be um, and so really I was sort of free-spirited living in the moment deliberately you know they avoided any concern that one day I would need to return to the country of my birth which was the UK and to my birth parents who lived in the UK so um, as you know I'll go back to the title and forgive me I'll sort of just throw this up there so this is really just storytelling and don't try and sort of use the rational mind to make sense of this it really is a story but my first experience of animals was when I asked for a cup of tea and my grandmother said I'm sorry the cow is in uh, a mood a strop and I said how strange um why not so my grandparents were vegetarian and cows are revered they're Sikhs and um 
I went deep into that religion of Sikhism and I came out the other side entirely alone. That's not making the religion bad. It's just, it wasn't my journey. So anyway, at the age of six, I remember being in India and walking into the belly of a large metal bird cage. It's called an aeroplane. Kid will call it, um, uh, you know, a bird uh, cage. And, um, uh, you know, at, you know, at the age of six, when I came back, um, uh, I, I, I tried to fit in. So, um, you know, the starch clothes, the pigtails, the wearing itchy socks and the tight shoes and not being able to say what I wanted to and really fitting in and, and, and being good. And of course, it was traumatic because it manifested in sleepwalking, um, nightmares, repetitive dreams, etc., which were very, very deep uh, dreams that I went into when I studied my MSc. And they were actually quite profound and they were almost like from previous generations. Um, but anyway, I'll stop here. Many of us recognize this. At some level, we've all done this. We've crushed our soul to be accepted in the system. And as a child, it's understandable because you're in the, in the world of adults. But why do we allow ourselves? Why, do, why does this happen to us when we're, when we're adults? So anyway, I continue to do this until 10 years ago when I stopped and started doing work that I truly, truly loved and truly believed in. And I started speaking out. Um, against our system, injustice and fake news. And I wasn't the typical activist. I worked from the space of my own inquiry. So I never repeated what somebody else did. I had to, it had to be a very personal inquiry. And that was really, really important. So today, uh, 10 years on, I am at the phase of my next challenge and, um, and, you know, really doing purposeful work. And so the co-star of this show is... Um, there so uh i give up he's just he's given up on me so um he is uh bono and now i just want you to really relax because i'm going to tell you a story um from uh mr bono so it's called a note from the little guru and i have put it out but i just want you to enjoy it so i want you to imagine if for a moment bono could speak what would he say and so he'd say welcome I'd like to introduce myself, a loyal and trusted companion of the scientist, inquirer, writer, lawyer, mediator, mom, Ruby. I am Bono, a male of 12 years of age. I weigh 21 kilograms, a little fat. I have fur, hair all over my body, eyes, eyelashes, ears, tongues, lips, lungs, kidneys. And yes, I am a pooch, a dog, or whatever insensibilities you refer to my kind as. I'm further defined as an English Springer Spaniel. I'm not like you, but we both breathe, inhale and exhale, and I inhabit this planet with you. The difference is your kind, unlike mine, have myths and conditioning, which inform you that you have dominion over others, over the planet, which has led you to pollute and destroy the very environment which is intended to be your home. It's a very clever dog. No doubt this is predicated by a lack of presence. That is, you live in the past, and the future, but never in the now, with a purpose and a context which doesn't really serve you. So this is a story of my mother, Ruby, coming home. So many times we relegate experiences to the conditioned mind, the rational mind, without really being present. I do that too. What do I mean by the conditioned mind and I do that too? Well, we've all been processed, unaware of why we act and behave as we do. Ruby's becoming aware of this, she witnessed that in me. My papa was a gun dog. And as fate would have it, my mother is a practicing vegan. I have never been near a shoot. However, I have a deep and primal need, a strange desire, habits you may say, to take the stuffing out of toys to fetch a toy bird and parade it around and then bring it to my mother to sniff deeply and intensely during our walks in the woods, a rich world that I'm entirely present in. So that's my conditioning, my DNA. It was never taught to me, nor was I exposed to other dogs to learn from. It's part of my heritage, part of my evolution. You humans may refer to it as your past lives or whatever story your enlightened predecessors may have told you, born from accessing a state at that time through their DNA, memories, bodies, and breaths. So I'm talking about the great prophets. Otherwise, they would have told you about the birth of the planet, the universe, Gaia, the dinosaurs, the human journey, greed, consumption, and the impact humans would have on the planet. No, this is all missing. We all like a good story. The journey is that of my mother, Ruby, to a place of the real self, 
the eye, through the head, the heart, enchantment, and the sacred, importantly through her body, her intuition, wisdom, her breath, and ultimately from that place of trusting herself as a woman, the space that I know her best, that is how I am. Ruby meets enchantment in the sacred, the rituals, the connection, where just for a moment she is immersed and entirely present and one with life, just like our walks and runs in the wood when I'm entirely absorbed in my world. This was and remains a mystery to find a world that makes sense to her and one that she could truly be herself in, a synthesis of the whole, a context, a purpose and relationship outside of that offered by the limited anthropocentric, that means human-centric paradigm, to that of deep ecology, that means really our relationship with the planet, the earth, and knowing that we're just sitting on a little rock in the middle of nowhere and yeah, that, that, that's, you know, that, that's, that's where we are. So the journey continues with her, that's Ruby, noticing patterns and a synthesis of the duality. I will narrate intermittently through her life as I am a state that she is able to access. She says it's the closest she has to unconditional love and she calls me her dearest little guru. And that story really for me was, I grew up with dogs, but they were not, like the law sees them as property and chattels, but they fitted in around me as opposed to me really seeing, really seeing Bono. And there's a lovely line from the movie Avatar when, um, you know, just at the beginning when the animal is killed and, and it's actually seeing. Do you actually see another? Do you actually see this little being with its own needs or does it just fit into the way you've been indoctrinated to see these uh, you know, uh, these beings. So with any journey, you need a guide, a teacher, a coach, and these guides are all around us all the time. That's if we're open to learnings and receiving. And of course, we have to be open to be able to discern what is good for us and what's not. So the obvious guide is that laid down by the current structure, the current system of the world. That is how you're defined by society, a measure of how successful you are. This could be power over others. It could be how much money you have, how good you look, how much educated you are, um, all the blah, blah. However, such guides aren't real because if they were, we'd be ecstatic. We'll be living in a fair, equal, evolved and beautiful world with work that is purpose, purposeful and meaningful. And we'll be talking about death right from the beginning, as opposed to stories that talk about eternal or afterlife. So we know from the current situation in the world today, the disparity between the haves and the have nots. We know what we're doing to the planet. We know what we're doing to each other. And we know what we're doing to cohabitees and to other animals that the current structure or the system or the indoctrination or what we're told or try to fit in really doesn't work. It's not fit for purpose. So in India, it's common to seek a guru. A guru simply means a teacher. Anything or anyone could be a teacher. And so when all of those constructs in society did not really work, serve or inspire or nourish me, including religion, I turned inwards. And that's when I accidentally came across my guru and I've already introduced you to him. It is Bono. He had a profound impact in my life because he taught me the way just to be. And then he turned me into a vegan. And of course, in return, I had to return the favor. I turned him into a vegan. So the art of being is hard in itself, as we have all heard the phrase doing. So profound because I realized that I could not love this animal we call dog and then eat another animal that that was the start of my profound journey. And that's where all the personal development work, the yoga, the shamanic journeys, etc. I had to build 2.0 on all of that work. All of these journeys and learnings have to be fit for purpose for right now. And the only way I could make it so was by my experience and my journey, not somebody else's, but mine. So Bono, my direct experience. So... Now I'm going to do a little exercise. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And so Kieran's joined. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and I'm going to tell you a story. And this is mindfulness. So it's one that Dr. Joy um, uh, coined um, the term carnism, which is you don't say people are carnivals. You talk about people, um, uh, uh, carnism when you eat um, flesh. But this is no judgment. Everyone's on a journey. So imagine for a moment, close your eyes. 
we are in an alternate reality. There's another Ruby somewhere. My, you're meeting my alter ego. You're a guest at an elegant dinner party that I have organized in my home. You're all seated with all our friends. I've set the table. You're all looking beautiful and radiant. The room is warm. Candlelights flicker across the wine glasses. And there's a smell, an aroma, which the herbs and the seasonings, it's delicious. Mm. You're feeling hungry. When the stew arrives, you all take a few mouthfuls and savor the delicacy. Mmm, again, you all reply at once. This is delicious. Please, Ruby, where did you get the recipe? Gosh, of course, I'm delighted to tell you, I say. First, I recount all the special herbs and spices I'm freshly picked from the garden. Then I tell you about the marinade, and I, and I, and I tell you all the different spices in the marinade. Stop, Ruby, stop. Please tell us what is this delicacy? It's just melting in the mouth. Okay, I said. I pause and say, well, you need 10 pounds of Springer Spaniel. I used Bono. I see all your reactions to me. It's revolting, Ruby. How could you? The shock, the disgust, the horror, the confusion. Why? But I don't understand, I ask you all. Hey, I say. And I look around and I say, you're wearing the best designer leather shoes. You, I point, you have a delicate baby calfskin leather jacket. And friends, we had a barbecue last week when we were all eating hot dogs. So why are you upset about me cooking my dog? What's the difference? And if you open your eyes, this is the multi-billion dollar system where you are away from your own mindfulness of what you do. It's like going to church, I'm not religious, and then being involved in all the illicit activities on the other six days of the week. It's a schizophrenia. So mindfulness for me was exactly that. It was deprogramming my mind from what society, from what culture, from what nation, from what history had dictated to me. And asking myself, where was I? Who was I? And how did I feel about this? So if you love my bono, Comparatively, by human standards, he has the intelligence of a two-year-old child. Then really there is no reason for you to love a pig, who's far more sentient and far more clever than my Bono. Pigs are known to play computer games with three-year-olds. They play in the pool and they blow bubbles like children. And did you know a cow is revered for her compassion? And despite all that we do to her, she never lashes out. Then there are the cries of the cows when we take our calves away. And then of course, there's the lamb's entire innocence as it's taken to slaughter. So what I'm saying is that if you love one, if you love Bono, if you practice mindfulness, if you're truly present and truly free, your choices would be different. And there is another way. The movement to a plant-based diet, gosh, it's growing fast and exponentially. It's the new way because it looks after the planet. Of course, there are, um, there are slight aberrations, but we can work on those. But I'd like to take you on this journey of a six-part artful series, a journey of presence, love, fun, and, to a one, and with a wonderful circle of friends from all over the world. So I'm going to put a link um, in here, which is... Um, the link to the uh, mindfulness course and it's really um where it's about uh, the six the six steps are the art of mind mindfulness and joy with your dog so you don't need a dog you can borrow one or you can do those practices with anyone the art of creating recipes for your dog what i make for myself i also make for bono favorite treats and snacks and um, smoothies for your dog health and supplements for the older dog and then, of course, the circle of friends. That's how our cohabitees on the planet. So it's all those that share the planet with us, but we don't recognize because the current system is our fault. And then, of course, the bigger picture, much bigger than what is our place. We really are, as one dear sage said, a puny little creature on the planet. But we think so highly of ourselves. We're one part of creation, this fantastic piece of life. So forgive me here, I will just end and I will unmute you. Um, but 
welcome. And the question is, How do I unmute you? <laughs> Sorry. We can unmute ourselves. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. so, wow. So Maybe all teary with this story. It's like had some tears. Yeah. How do we write down the comments? You made a very, very good point, Ruby. Count on that one. So, thank you. I'm so glad I'm already plant based, otherwise, I would be, you know, crying here. <laughs> so, Me thank too. you. <laughs> it's and, a, it's and you a, know what? Sorry. Sorry, um, it's exactly the reason why I actually chose to uh, leave meat exactly your story so it's like yes if you do it for one you have to do it for all oh my and God. we're trying to go to hawaii <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> authentic parenting 101 I can't, I can't even yell at him right now <laughs> <laughs> i have so, a question yeah Can't what's social it's um, what's social parenting mm-hmm what's Bono's favorite food do you know that's a, a really good question he likes uh, I can't say f-o-o-d in his presence because he just suddenly his ears prick up <laughs> but um he loves uh, peanut butter so I have to make sure it doesn't have palm oil in it um, okay. and I can make sort of uh, peanut butter um, treats with him strangely enough um, he absolutely loves chopped carrot broccoli um, very little bits of kale uh, rice and some lentils that's his absolute favorite he also loves tofu sausages treats he goes completely gaga over it so it's quite extraordinary they um, they're omnivores and they can adapt and even cats oh. can adapt I was just about to ask that like does that affect their digestive system or anything at all no uh, but you have to be intuitive and you have to see how they react because um, yeah, yeah. If, uh, you, have to, you have to make sure that you don't give them too much um, lentils or too much um, uh, sort of, you know, cabbage because he's had a bad experience with cabbage. Um, it's just unbearable to be with him the next day. So um, it cleans the whole system. <laughs> so. Okay. 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 And, 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 sorry. No, no, no. That's okay. Go ahead. Yes. Um, Ruby, so you're you're the one who makes the food. Do they? Uh, and 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 sorry, I'm I'm ignorant on that side. But are there are there vegan meals for animals or not as of yet? Uh, do you know it's a really good point? There are. Um, so there's a brand called Lily's Kitchen that does um, a sun a, a January sort of vegan um, uh, you know tin for um, um, for, for dogs and there is a German producer that creates um, vegan um, treats but uh, vegan food but what I'm trying to do is I also um, something that I haven't raised is around sustainability which is um, looking at sort of the supply chain of uh, you know these foods etc so at the moment I try and cook whatever I'm eating I give it to Bono and he's had a full blood test he's had everything checked and I was actually really surprised that both of myself and Bono, our iron counts really go with, good, we're doing very well. So at the moment, he's eating more of my food. So whatever I cook, he can eat. So obviously no garlics, no onion. So we, we've become quite um, alkaline in terms of the food that we eat. Okay, interesting. Hmm. So how long did it take you to kind of switch him? Because I, my, my, I have two cats and they're really picky. <laughs> and, and there's whole drama about the food and because we you know people in the area they tend to poison cats so i did teach oh, wow. them every time when they come home they they get food so they learn only to eat at home okay but i have like four different types of food and you know kind of extra treats and stuff so uh how does that work you know because it's it's i just see them making a big fuss about it I, I love what you say, um, Irma, and it's the whole thing that with animals, we tend to generically brand them all together. 
and um, you know just very quickly on that so if you look at the feminist uh, you know the, the suffragette movement women were branded all together we weren't seen as individuals slavery all branded together not seen as individuals colonization other countries were less than so I think with cats it's a very intuitive process in your relationship with Bono I went cold turkey the moment I came to an awareness I went cold turkey but I watched him very carefully and I did a ton of research uh, with vets and to be honest the vets um, they, they didn't embarrass me, but they literally said, no, absolutely not. You know, we're not giving you authority for him to go vegan. It's not part. And now, um, you know, six years on the vets like, oh, well, actually, you know, um, we're actually giving your, we're giving your diet to our, um, you know, dog patients because they're allergic to meat based products because the supply chain for meat based products is pretty awful. You're using the dead carcasses, really bad and foul meat. Um, you know, from the supply chain. So I, I think it's trusting yourself, being intuitive about it and doing a lot of research. Um, and the thing is, animals, just like us, um, every 10 years, my body changes um, and my diet changes. And, um, you know, where I could voraciously eat before, I can't do that now. So similarly, it's with your cat. So you'll, you will get an intuitive feel as to what you can um, you know what you can provide it and you'll it's a lovely journey um, to 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 go on Did okay. I Did I thank you I'll, I'll try yeah yeah <laughs> I'll try can because my, my I have this fear they're just gonna change the environment because you know with cats is when, when they, they go out a little bit their house, house cats but I'm just thinking yeah if I do it really too quickly you know just like cold turkey they're just going to switch. They're going to find some other place that's going to feed them better. <laughs> Do you know, you're 100% right. You're, right. you're, you're absolutely right. Because I used to go to my local pub and uh, Bono would disappear from me and he would be going around every single table and they'd all be feeding him meat. And then he'd come back and I swear to you, I swear that in three or four hours, his personality changed. He had a swagger, like he had a gold medallion and he'd say, hey, baby, I'm back. <laughs> his whole time, you know, the, whatever's in that meat, something changed. But when it, with plant-based, he's just so gentle. Mm -hmm. Just okay. so incredibly gentle. So, um, but it's a journey, and you're. And the thing is, we're breaking frontiers. We're doing things that, um, you know, the system won't consider as normal. But mm -hmm. what okay, cool. Yeah. Well, then research it is for me. Thank you. This was awesome. I've got a question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm loving this. Honestly, like when you were speaking, your voice is so soothing. I closed my <laughs> eyes and I was just visualizing everything that you were saying. Completely loved it. I've got a bit of a, it's not a controversial question, but it's like one that from someone who is a meat eater uh, would want to kind of know your views because um, I always start everything with when I grew up in Zimbabwe <laughs> um that's all we had we had meat and we would have to almost um sorry to say this kill our own you know cows or chicken or goat because that's all we had to go by that's all we could really live by what are the alternatives for people that maybe have less money to you know spend on organic food because i think one of the misconceptions is that buying or spending on plant-based or organic food is really expensive just wanted to know your take on that uh, do you know, Ravimba, you raise a really beautiful question. So I did a lot of work um, in East Africa. So um, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Djibouti, South Sudan. And um, absolutely, culturally, um, it's, it's very much because that's, that's the way, you know, the, the planet and uh, the way people grow up and that, you know, absolutely understand that. Um, you, you, so I'm going to unpack the question. So the first point is the whole culture and the history. Absolutely agree with you. Having said that, I know that many Orthodox and religious um, holidays, particularly um, Orthodox uh, Christian and um, uh, certainly some uh, Muslim, um, they would have completely vegan. So I would go there and I had no problem getting food. So it was part of their culture to be able to do that. Um, what I found is that instead of culture, it's more traditions that have been continued on because that's the way things are done. Um, so in those parts of the world, they do, it is possible um, to, 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 to change the diet and for health reasons. And it, it, it is possible, but it's just um, the culture and the way the system is there. Um, it's very, very difficult. It's going to take years because if you're living in um, a rural community and 
uh, you know, you've got ox, et cetera, or, or, you know, cows, you're having to rely on that ecosystem. But the fact is we have to change that. Um, and, and there is room for doing that. There's a lot of healthy alternatives. Um, and, and, and it is possible to do that, but it is an uphill climb to try and get people to change that sort of psychology. But we're, on the second point you raise about sort of organic food being um, expensive, you're absolutely right. But we don't have to follow what the system has put out there in terms of organic and healthy. We can create very simply in our own homes. It's far more cheaper for me to live the diet that I live, which is the lentils, um, the rice, the spinach, the kale, um, or, um, you know, and, and for instance, my, you know, parents, they love sort of, you know, uh, growing their own sort of, um, you know, herbs and, and um, uh, you know, vegetables. It's, but you have to change your mindset and you have to take that journey and you have to be willing to, to, to change and to learn. So I think absolutely it is possible, but you have to go against what the system's telling you. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's really insightful. Thank you. <coughs> Toussaint. Yeah, that, that, that leads me to my, my question I posed to you like, uh, a few days ago about my little cat here. Oh. Um, <laughs> Can I show Bono um, chases cats? Does yeah, he like cats? Oh my God, he chases them, unfortunately. All right, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's, uh, so uh, I, um, yeah, I had the quick look at question. Obviously, um, I would love to really just upgrade his diet and but but I guess I was the same the other day that I'm like far down your you know miles away from your kind of level of you know introduced to the aspect but I would love to at least just give my cat you know you know in my way it's like you I realize now I've got my cat in prison when when I spiritually start to go through my chain hmm. every day it's, it's hard um for me you know even just going back to I got my cat frustrated I took away his biggest his biggest weapon that like mother nature gave him is, is that energy um so i've gone through this whole kind of healing process of how to integrate and accept that you know you know it's, it's just where i am today but you're right i've really got a lot of you know i was looking at it was very interested in trying to look at a healthier diet and adding more meat but i guess like you say i've had struggles with the whole financial aspect of you know and i you know i've been now from from hearing you looking for you know some sort of um alternative plant-based diet are there, you know are there diets you said there are diets out there for cats to, to possibly uh, do you know Tucson it's a really good point so at the moment um, my research hasn't gone to cats because unfortunately Bono's completely shut me out of all any relationship with cats because he just chases them and then he cries and makes such a fiasco that I'm uninvited from any friend's house who has a cat or at least I can't bring Bono um, and of course if I come home and I've got the scent of a cat Bono uh, he has a <laughs> I wish you could see the look I am going to bring you over because he's got the most profound look on his face yeah, when I mentioned the word cat <laughs> but oh, wow. um, I think just like I was six years ago when everybody um went what are you completely it's impossible I think you have to break the frontiers animals are not machines they adapt and survival well I mean dogs for their history is they were wolves but they adapted they adapted because you know that part um, you know, connected with us um, and related to us and uh, ensured their survival. So I think in a way, we have to be constantly evolving. We don't stay stuck in a system. So I think, you know, push those barriers and find out. So when I, when I started with Bono, I was completely alone because the thing is in, in India, a lot of the dogs are vegetarian, but not vegan. Um, but actually, a dogs are lactose intolerant, so milk is not good for them, you know. But and so I, you really have to push the sort of frontiers on that. Um, but it's it's a beautiful journey once you take it, because mm -hmm. and, and if it's coming from the space of uh, you know uh, compassion, when you if I love another human being, I love an animal, I love a snail. I they are pieces of creation. And it's just manifestations of life in different form. And I suppose that's why religion never worked for me because I, I couldn't find, it was, it was too, I, I couldn't find a space for that. Although now I know that churches are working on looking at sustainability, et cetera. And I think animals will come in. And when I looked at animals in religion, it was never said that we could abuse animals. It was just like Ravimbo says that in a time where you're starving, you were given the right mm. license to go and kill, but we're not starving. And, you know, but if you want to maintain outdated culture just for the sake of repeating something, which is not in your experience, that's what I find fascinating. That's what we need to 
that's what we need to work on. Brilliant. No, you're absolutely right. I totally agree with you. Thank you. Uh, your cat's not going to be happy with me, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, just listen really carefully for your... Oh, hello, oh, no, catty. Oh, my God. Oh, no, it's a cat. Okay. Listen, I know all you to pull out. I have a question. Yes. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, who's who's got a question? Mao. Mao. Oh, where's Mao? I can't find him. Oh, there you are, Mauricio. Hello. Hey, hi, Ruby. Hi. Thank you for all the information. I have a very good question because actually, mm -hmm. I I use that German product um, <laughs> with one of my dogs, and when I moved to Mexico, I wanted to bring that. Oh, you froze. Uh, Mauricio, you froze. Yeah, because I was up to the point is that this product. Mm. Okay, but can you listen to me? Yes. Okay, I'm going to shut down my video because. Um, can you listen to me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So the question is because I've tried that German product and it saved the life of my uh, Labrador for. This product extend his life like for another four years mm -hmm. in very good conditions. Um, now I'm starting to have the same hip problem with one of my dogs here in Mexico. And I know that it's just a matter of what he's to a better life. So where should I start? Should I start with your uh, product should i start with how should i start okay so i missed you a little bit uh, um uh, mauricio but if i understand it that uh, the, the german product was working uh, well and it helped how old is the labrador so my labrador died oh. but it extended his life for another four years easy mm -hmm in very good conditions. And now one of my dogs here in Mexico, it's starting to decline. And um, Mauricio, you, uh, we lost you. Um, Mauricio? Uh, Mauricio? He has that connection. He has a bad connection, uh, but can he hear? Can he hear us? He comes in and out because he's moving in his hotel. Yeah. Uh, so, Mauricio, unfortunately, we lost you. Well, we learned one thing. Okay, so we are not buying internet in Mexico, <laughs> <laughs> but holidays, yes. Well, <laughs> and margaritas. <laughs> well, in in in. Five sorry months, about that. Oh, sorry, Mauricio. There is. This is Mexico. But in five-star resorts in the hotel zone and places, there is. He's in a unique place, which is unique and beautiful, but it doesn't have the level of 5G. Yeah. Uh, we just lost Bono again. He's, um, he's gone and sat down. Um, but Mauricio? A plant yes, I'm here. Okay, a plant-based diet for a dog has done wonders for my dog. He's 12 years old and he looks amazing. Um, and the only thing he's got is a genetic arthritis, which is nothing to do with uh, plant-based. It's a genetic uh, defect that these type of dogs do have. We used to run a lot when he was young. Um, and the vet has actually said it's not even that that was a problem. But what I've done is I've put supplements. I give him half a teaspoon of coconut um, oil in the morning. And I also use a product called You Move which is why you move. It's a completely um, natural product. There's no contra uh, you know, indications with any anti-inflammatory medicine that you use. And that has given him a whole new lease of life. So uh, natural products. And then of course, I watch him over two or three days. How is he doing? And um, you know, I, I, I work on that. So um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'll start with the coconut oil. Didn't half, about it. Yeah, half a teaspoon. Um, yeah, okay. it's very, very good with them. And I give it to Bono in the morning. Um, and um, he has rice, lentils, kale, uh, chopped up. 
um, and I just check, uh, you know, every three months he goes for a blood test just to check that he's okay and to check his joints, etc. And so far he's doing great. I mean, of course, he's getting older. He's 12, 12, you know, he's in his 70s. Perfect. Okay, thank you for that help. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Um, my question is, he's a Springer Spaniel, right? Uh huh. So his nature and his history was supposed to hunt. Was that also conditioned in history? And was it his real nature? Do you know, it's a, that's a really good point. It was his real nature because he was a wolf. Uh, you know, he's connected to the wolf family. So absolutely, it was his real nature. But look at the fact he's domesticated. And actually, that's a whole new discussion about, is it right to domesticate animals? And and the, the extremist views go to the point that you shouldn't actually do it. But you know, hey ho, he's here. And so one thing, you know, as a lawyer, I've been looking at is trying to stop these puppy breeding um, uh, you know, farms so that you're actually looking after sick or elderly dogs and not looking at sort of, you know, um, uh, farmed uh, puppies. But his nature is he's a gun dog. He came from Spain um, about, I think, 200 years ago. And he loves his, his father was literally a hunting dog. He was a, a super breed hunting dog. Uh, this one's a bit of a debutante. I don't think he'd do anything to hunt, which means that getting up and doing any work but uh, yeah that's um <laughs> yes and my other question was what about intermittent fasting and autophagy for dogs wow that's really uh, deep um that's a really good question you know um i've never i've never thought of that uh, fasting with dogs although when he's got a tummy ache or anything, then um, I will just put him on a very simple rice diet and reduce his, uh, and I'm sure it's good for them. Well, they do in the wild fast, huh? because sometimes they don't get food, so they, uh, they're gluttonous. Oh, and by the way, this is fake. This is not real fur. Okay, don't worry, we know you're congruent. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mr. Bono? Um, yes, Mr. Bono, look. Hola, Bono. Baba, look, who's that? No, no. Babaji, this way, this way. Look, Babaji. Look. Babaji. Yeah, Babaji means holy man. Uh, Babaji, Babaji. He's like. <laughs> He's like, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, any more questions? Ruth? Yes? I've just purchased and I'm really looking forward to your next video series. I'm really oh. looking forward to the smoothies and the recipes and what I can do for Gracie because she's 15 now. So wow. I think it will be really helpful to, for her to have new recipes. Delighted. Absolutely delighted. And Bono will be in the uh, videos as well. Um, he loves being in the kitchen. He just sits there and watches me. So um, it'll, be, it'll be a fantastic journey. But it's... Um, it's actually finding the terminology and the language that when you meet individuals and say that you're plant-based or vegan, you can actually respond back very, you know, um, with authenticity and with facts. Because at the moment, there's a lot of disinformation going on because we know that the meat industry is, and forgive me for repeating this, a multi, multi-billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. And the hypnotic uh, advertising and the links to pharmaceuticals, the link to uh, medical schools, the way they uh, teach doctors, um, it's incredible. They're always advocating the meat-based diet, uh, which is, it's wrong. It's not true. And so I speak to many doctors who are now saying, you know, the link between colon cancer, uh, the link between sort of obesity, the link between sort of high cholesterol, um, it's, yeah, uh, uh, it's, it's just not good. And you're meeting more and more case studies of people who are plant-based living up to their hundreds. And actually, I did want to tell you, there is a dog called Brambles who lived up to the age of 25, which is unheard of. And she was on a vegan diet, which just goes to show that's the impact, um, you know, Bono's like, I don't want to live to 25. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it just shows it's completely possible. I totally agree with that. I just wanted to quickly add something um, in terms of, because um, when the more we've been having this conversation, I realized actually I don't eat meat. My, my housemate was saying to me, 
I've never seen, I don't really see you eat meat that much, but I find that whenever I do eat the meat that I get from like, you know, your regular Tesco, whatever, it's actually not healthy compared to the meat that I grew up with in Zimbabwe. So I think there is something there as well that naturally and health with my health, I actually feel better when I'm not eating meat. I'll probably go away with like eggs or spinach and broccoli and stuff like that. But I think also, um, like you said, in terms of the agriculture side of things, really benefits from it. But also from a vegan, people that are saying they're vegan or flexitarian, it's a trend now of people who are just doing it for the culture. But mm. like you said, you need to have the facts. And I, I definitely think that that's where the gap is. And, you know, trends don't really last. You can have a trend for a year, but it's not actually making a real impact. Because as a marketeer, I know that this is something that businesses are tapping into more and more because they're saying, oh, veganism is a trend, but actually it should be a lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, absolutely, uh, Rivimbo, and the impact on the planet, it's egregious. Um, because the fact is, um, particularly in Africa, and I talk about, uh, you know, it's, it's wrong to say Africa as a whole. It's like saying the whole of India, you know, it's massive and you've got massive, you know, countries uh, within Africa. But the, but the fact that you're taking land um, from the local people um, to, and say, same in South America, um, to use to graze animals. If, you, if I was to put a, a cow in the room right now, that's a massive creature. That's about three people or four people. And you're feeding that, the water, the grain and everything, which should be fed to people. So the system's daft. It doesn't work. And I agree with you, Ravimbo, that culturally, of course, there was a reverence. If you look at the way uh, any culture treats animals uh, in, in history, there was a lot of reverence. But now it's sickening because, and of course, the energy, you know that when you're standing next to an, an angry person, you take their energy and you're suddenly like, gosh, why am I feeling like this? It's the same with the food you consume. Um, it has an impact mm. on you because all the fear and, the, and the, you know, we're talking about, I, I, there's a fantastic uh, graph which shows how many animals are slaughtered a second. And to, to allow that many in a, uh, into the food chain, these animals are petrified. Um, and the, you know they're sentient they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they're, they're more sentient than Bono I mean cows my goodness um, Bono's got the age of a two-year-old a pig's got the age of a three-year-old and so you, we as evolved um, individuals we can't be doing that uh, we can't something has to shift otherwise we'd still be Neanderthals yeah totally agree so I, this is my last point it's just that i'm really i'm really loving what you're talking about but i think just i remember being in malta and one of the things that they do there is you get to ride a horse and then they take that horse takes you on a ride and you know at the time we just was like yeah something to do in malta but actually it was a horrible experience because when we really saw the horse there was just like this energy connection it was like it was suffering and you could tell that its tongue was stuck outside and it had flies coming on its tongue it was really sad to see and I, I guess just listening to you today is just like really getting me to think about my choices a um, bit more because I'll eat meat on a casual on a casual basis but is it a case where I really need to start considering going fully vegan because I don't eat meat anyway on a regular basis so it's interesting Absolutely. And Ravimbo, one thing to be aware of is try and look at supplements. There is no harm in supplements. I am more happy taking a supplement like a B6, B12 or, uh, you know, an omega-3, than have, uh, which is less on the supply chain on the planet, etc., cetera, um, than having to go and kill an animal for it. And, the, and I'm going to tell you something which is so daft about our system is that actually they're spraying B12 onto crops so that animals eat it, and then we consume B12 from the meat of those animals. So why can't you just take B12 and spray it or take it as a supplement? That's what the system won't tell you. But the, the, the fake and the distortions is they'll say you need B12 from the animals. It isn't. They're putting B12 into the diet of the animals so that you can eat B12 and they can say you're getting it from the flesh of the animal. So... You, it, it is about changing um, our ways of being um, the, and, it, and it needs to happen. And the thing is, I'm 50 years old and I'm still running and I'm doing, you know, I, I feel fine. Uh, Bono disagrees. <laughs> He's just moved. He's going, oh, here she goes again. But um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing fine. So, uh, you know, um, why not?
I've uh, stunned everybody into silence. I've looked, Bono, I've made it fall. This is Thank what you. happened. He's fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That was really good. Thank you so much. And just delighted to have you uh, join on the course and uh, meet others and have Mr. Bono in tow and um, just a massive learning. Um, and, and, and for me, really, I had to spend a lot of money on my education to get to this point. And it's really about divesting that information and just making it more accessible and easy and putting it out there. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. This was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you. Camilla should partner. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So I think. I'm going to end. Thank you so much, everybody. A real, real thank, thank you. you. And from Bono as well. Thank you.